Uh, hey there, Russ here. Welcome back to the shop. Okay, last couple, two videos had been about making wood knobs and T bolts. So it only stands to reason that now I'm going to show you how to make your own T track. And it's actually pretty simple, it's pretty easy, and you can vary it based on what kind of T bolt you use. So I'm also going to go over T bolts a little bit. I'm also going to show you how you could actually set up a T-Track and use a carriage bolt instead. So there's lots of things going to go on here. Let's do first, is let's see how do you make a T-Track. Uh, easiest way to make it is you take a piece of wood that's good, solid plywood, quality plywood is best. You can use solid wood if you want. And you make it a little wider than what your T-Track is going to be when you get done. Um, and we'll go over reasons for all this stuff when we get done. But you're going to have to determine what this width is going to be based on a couple other things. So you get your piece of wood and then you put a rabbit on the two edges like this. And that way, then you cut this in, in half down the middle and you end up with two pieces that look like this. We'll go over the size of this groove in a minute and what to watch for and how to determine what size you want to put here so that you'll know. This is a quarter by a quarter on the rabbit. That will get you by if you ha are using my uh, design of a T-bolt here with the uh, slide-in uh, T-nut. That's a one quarter twenty. And this thing is an inch this way and a half inch this way. And it's an eighth of an inch thick this way. And I put it onto the bolt, onto a threaded rod, and CA glued it in place, and that's my bolt. And these things work fine. Less than 50 cents a piece is what I've got in this thing now. 40 cents, I think, is what I've got in mine. And that's all it is to make one. There's other ways to make one. I'm going to show you another one. Uh, today. So anyway, let's take the three quarter inch after we've split it. Now we're going to make a dado. So basically to do a track, a T track, all you're going to have to do is do a rabbit and do a dado and you have, you can do a T track. So now I take my T track here, the two halves, and I put one of them right against here. And if I've got my width set properly, I can take the other one and put it against the other edge like that and I have a quarter inch gap between them and by that quarter inch gap is what you want for your bolt to step your bolt to be able to slide along it and if you look underneath you can see the t-track from those two rabbited pieces that's how you make it and when you glue this up you're gluing this surface here and this surface here so when you glue this in this thing is actually being glued on in two on two different planes that'll make that glue up very strong and if you want to add extra strength just shoot some bread nails through it to get it to uh hold it also with bread nails so or screws you could even put three quarter inch screws this this is now three quarters of an inch thick and you start with a three quarter inch thick these are a half inch thick plywood that I have. This is actually flooring that you would put on a floor. This is the cutoffs. And I was just using this so that you can see. This is a great plywood to use. But use a good quality plywood if you're going to use plywood. And half inch is a good dimension. So that you can use it on a three quarter inch piece of material. You cut your dado out in your material. The width of these and you put them in. And there you are. You have the makings of a T-Track. If I take my T-bolt, it goes in nicely, nice and loose, but if I turn it, it doesn't turn. Now, keep in mind that if you remember, I showed you there was also this T-nut here, which is smaller than mine. It's still a half inch here, but it's only 11 sixteenths here, so just under three quarters of an inch. The way this is configured by being a quarter and a quarter, I have a quarter inch on this side with the rabbit, I have a quarter inch on this side with the rabbit, and I have a quarter inch in the middle here. That adds up to three quarters of an inch. This is just under three quarters of an inch, and that's why it can actually go in sideways 
and that means that it will spin 360 degrees. To make this fit, you really have to size your rabbits a little smaller. This will get you by, and this, if you go with this T-nut. If you're going to go with a smaller T-nut, then you want to cut your pieces. And what I did is I cut this from one long piece instead. It's the same thing as cutting it from this. And by doing it this way, this tells me if I add a uh, eighth of an inch to what this, uh, excuse me, a quarter inch to what this width would be, so I can fill and get the gap in between, you're going to have to know how wide your radiator is going to be. Now, I set this model up and everything so that I can kind of show you how you can change it subtly to do slightly different things and fit different T-nuts and that sort of thing. So, the quarter inch one gives you your best loose fit so that this particular one will go in there. It will not spin 360 degrees and you that quick you have a nice little T-track. So, for all you guys that are in a hurry, you've got all the information you need to make your own T-track. Once you get this in place, you figure out your width, put your pieces in, and you have a T-track. Now, let's go over some of the nuances about what's going on here. And more importantly, let's take a look at what is going on in here. This one, inside there, we can actually see that before we put it together if we want to. Let me show you how you do that. If I take and turn this sideways, and I take my pieces and put them in here upside down, now my dado is, is setting up. And I'm just going to extend this out a little bit past so it hangs over the edge here. That way, now when I hold all these pieces together, I can take this nut, The let's take this one first. I can take this one, the longer one, the one that is the uh, slide-in T-nut, and I can drop it in and it goes in fine out here sideways. I can drop it in. If you put it in this way, you can actually see... Now you can't, but I can see how this thing is fitting in here and that it won't turn. But if I take, let me see if I can get closer here. Yeah, maybe you can see this. So this goes in here, but it doesn't turn. As you can see, it's too wide. It, the, the bolt is wider, the T-nut is wider than my groove. So when it fits in here, it doesn't turn. When I take the smaller one, if I put it in crossways, you can see it sets in there. Sets in this way, but it doesn't go all the way through. So when I put this one in here and slide it in, it works as a T-bolt, except it turns because it can be pulled right down in there. This one, if I put it in this way, you can see it won't go all the way down. But if I turn it, now it goes down. So... This width is kind of important. So three quarter by three quarter works, but I have found that for T-nuts like this, it's about an eighth inch thick, and they give you, they're a half inch wide, and more importantly, that distance right between the stem and the edge here, if you were to measure that, that is an important measurement for the size of your lip. So instead of going to a full three quarter by three quarter lip here, we're gonna cut that down. And when we made this piece, and I just did this one, one long one, instead of cutting two rabbits in it out of a wider piece, I made it one piece narrower, same thing. But I made my, my rabbit Five thirty seconds by five thirty seconds, and I found that is a good number for getting the right size. So when I put this in here, like so, I can now take this bolt, put it in here, and it works fine. The only difference between these two and these two is the size of this rabbit. Otherwise, they're they're the same size. So this fits in there nice and neat. Whoops. Whoops, this is the wrong one. This is the one I made. Sorry. We'll get to that one in a minute. So we go into this. <clears throat> it, it fits in there nicely. If I put this one in there, 
This one also fits in nicely, but magically, it also doesn't turn anymore. So what's going on there? Let's go back to this view right here. Turn it upside down. And hopefully you can see that pretty good. So when I put this one in this way, if I cross it over, you see it won't go down in the groove. It goes in the groove this way, so that one can't turn. And it fits in between on the, the quarter inch stud part. Take this one, you can see it goes in, works nicely. And if I turn it sideways though, it doesn't go down. It holds it up. So that means that when now, with the 5 16 by 5 16 rabbit instead, this will not turn now. So that's why 5 16 by 5 16 works nicely. Now let's talk about that slot in the middle, that quarter inch opening, because that, when you want to size your dado, so that when you put these pieces in, you really want this to be, if you make it tighter and tighter, it makes it better for these, uh, uh, look, makes it less loose here, and that's okay. If I take my ruler, where is it? Up oh, there it is. And I put this bolt, this over, what I have done is the distance from here to there is going to be the same. So my shoulder still will fit. But all I've done by making this narrower and bringing this closer together is I have narrowed the slot itself. And by being that, the slot being like that, now when I put the bolt in, I still get this movement uh, in here, but it's a lot closer. And the reason for that is I can now take that same track with that one in there. What holds this bolt here, this is a carriage bolt. And because the shoulder is round all the way around, what happens is, there is no way to catch it. The way a carriage bolt works is it works off of the square inside edge right in here. So that means that these things have to be actually so close accurately, like so. And if I bring them in closer by adding a spacer in here, I've decreased this gap right here. Now I can actually take a carriage bolt and put it in here. And that carriage bolt will not turn and the reason is is that the shoulders on that carriage bolt are catching on the upper part of the track these t-bolts when you put them in they catching on the bottom part of the track so if you're going to use a carriage bolt you got to make sure that your measurement is dead on so that that shoulder will catch and not turn in there so you can actually set this up to do it with carriage bolts if you want myself let me probably tired of looking at view myself i would not use these particulars i really was in the, for some special reason or maybe that's all i have at that moment i got to get this done maybe then i would but i would avoid carriage bolts as a general rule uh i would just stick to making my own and there's another way you can make these if you don't have this slide t-nut you can make it from pretty much regular material in your shop and i'll show you that in a moment but that's how you would take by adjusting this upper slot closer then you just make this bolt fit in there tighter you haven't changed the bolt sliding in here because as long as both sides have that clearance right there for this bolt to set in here and have clearance when it's touching on the threads, but the edge of this is not touching the inside of that, as long as you have that kind of clearance, you're good to go. That's why a 5 30 seconds is a better setting for that dimension. The other thing about using uh, 5 30 seconds in the other way is, and it's only 5 30 seconds deep, so that the bolt fits in there nicely, but you don't have that, all that up and down movement. But also it gives you more meat right here on a half inch piece of material. Because if that's only 5 30 seconds, uh, if you take that away from a half inch, that makes this what? Uh, 
11, 30 seconds, I think, maybe. Anyway, whatever that is, that is a lot thicker than it is on the one with a quarter by a quarter. That one is only a quarter inch here. This one's going to be more like three-eighths of an inch, over, just over three-eighths of an inch. So it's a lot more meat, which means that actually, if you didn't care about this being so beefy like this one, you could cut this down in thickness now and still put this 5.30 seconds by 5.30 seconds in it and make this material maybe out of three-eighths material instead of, of a half inch. And you would still have a reasonable strength um, T-track when you got done. And your data would only be three-eighths of an inch deep instead of a half inch deep. So obviously, everything kind of changes in its strength by how big it is. The wider you make these pieces when you glue them in, the stronger this thing will be to try to pull it out, the harder it will be. The thicker you make this piece so that when you put brad nails or screws up into it, that holds more than a 3 8 thick piece would. So it's all a matter of relativity to the size of it and how much heavy duty you want it to make. I've never found a T-Track that really, I have to have a super lot of strength. I'm just trying to hold something still mostly. And you should be able to tighten something down pretty easily enough to really get it to not move without really stressing your, your wooden T-Track. So that's how you make your T-Tracks. 530 seconds by 530 seconds is what I would use. I don't see how you would ever go over one quarter by one quarter. And you can kind of adjust these when you get ready to install them if you need to go back and fine tune it to fit that particular T-nut. But everything you do here is really based on your T-nut itself. So make sure you know what kind of T-nut you're using before you start, whether it's one of these smaller ones, which is a factory one, or the um, slide-in T-nut that I turned into a T-bolt. Now, there is another way you can do this with regular material. If all you have is a regular bolt, <clears throat> I used, here, I made this T-nut, and if you look at it, it does, and it works just as good as any of them in here. It doesn't turn. And I made this strictly from a regular standard washer and uh, one quarter 20 bolt. Now, I did use a flange bolt. You can see there, because you can see the shoulder. And I like to use in one that was that shape, as opposed to a just a flat one, is this helps self-center that washer. Uh, you do want that washer to be in the center if you can any way possible. Uh, because these, these standard washers are three quarters in diameter. And when we get done, we, we glue it in place. It's nice and centered, and then we sat and we grind down on two sides to a half inch. So now it's a three quarter by a half inch with the same size shoulder that you get on this bolt right here. This is a factory bolt. This is actually 11 sixteenths, so it's actually a little smaller here than, my, than the shop made one, but it's identical half inch width here, and the lip is the same exact size as that lip. If you take a look at those two there, they kind of line up to each other, and they're pretty much the same dimension. So these are the same width, except for this one is slightly longer. And that is shop made from standard stuff you'll find in your shop. If you want to do this with just a regular hex bolt or some other type, the only thing you have to watch out for is your depth of cut. I said 530 seconds and 530 seconds. If you make this too thick, now I ground this down and I beveled it just a little bit just to keep it from digging in as it slides up back and forth when it tips so that it doesn't just dig in on the lip of that head bolt. If you go with a flat bolt or whatever you do, you want to kind of grind that down a little bit and flatten it, but you also got to make sure that the overall thickness is less than the 530 seconds. If this isn't, then you want to adjust the height of your rabbit here, make it a little higher so that you can fit your bolt in. So if you have to make your bolts, make them first. Make sure of your dimension here so that... Let me put these in this way, and this will help show it a little better. So when you have this inside the slot, 
like this, you want to make sure that it doesn't touch this ruler across there. Because if this thing is too tall and you hit it, then it's going to rub the bottom of your T-track. Uh, so you have to grind this away or make your T-tracks, your rabbit, a little deeper. So keep that in mind. So as long as you know what size your T-bolt is and take a good look at this, you'll be able to do all of this and you'll be able to get it all work. If you want to use carriage bolts, you can. I wouldn't. But it's so easy to make your own or like I said, if you buy them, you never know what size you're going to get. So make darn sure you know what you got before you make your T-track. Because how many times have you taken a regular T-track that you bought from the store and then you can't get these things to work inside it? It just, uh, you got to watch what you're doing. This way, I know, I now understand when I make my own T-track, it's going to fit this, the type of T-bolt that I'm using. No matter whether it's a shop made or one that I buy. So, I think that's everything. I probably rambled on quite a bit, but you know me, I love to do that. Uh, but this is what, how it works. If you have any questions about this, oh, one more quick thing. Also, the first one I made for this, I actually didn't do rabbits in wood. I actually just took OSB plywood, quarter inch, and I put one, two pieces together and glued them together. This one's an inch and a half, and this one's an inch and a quarter. Bada bing, bada boom, and now I have my track. So you can make your track this way too if you can live with the quarter inch here. In fact, if you redimension this piece, you could cut down the size of this lip so that you, it will work with the smaller head bolt because then the bolt would not spin on there if you make this lip a little smaller. So make this piece a little wider and you can have actually make this work with this using the OSB. The only thing you would get is you'll get a lot of movement here, which on a quarter inch, quarter inch, extra movement like that is not a bad thing. That just makes it easier to slide. It'll still tighten down just as good. So you can actually make it out of quarter inch. In fact, you'll see here in the next few days when I show you my miter gauge and my how I've revamped this with the Incra jig, and I am mounting my uh, dial, my dial in caliper on here so that you'll be able to go down to the thousands of an inch. But I had to make a T track for it. Guess what? Here's that T track, and here's the T bolt that I use in there, and it holds it just fine, slides nice and free, and this will be more than strong enough to be able to mount that gauge on here to be able to slide back and forth on here, which is what it's going to do. So, you can make a T-track out of anything. Uh, all you got to do is think outside the box. So, I think that's everything. Now, uh, if you have any questions, any ideas, any suggestions, I hope I made this pretty clear and showed you how easy it is to make this. But you do have to think outside the box because instead of having this one-piece track system, you actually make your your T-tracks in two pieces and put it together and you'll make a, still a very good strong T-track out of wood and boy is it easier to make it this way. So go out there and make some T-track. It's fun to do. Try it one time and see what you think. If you uh, do that and you want to share your pictures with me, you have my email. If you don't, ask for it and I'll give it to you. I'd love to see your pictures of your T-track and how you did it differently. It always helps us all do better with learning these things. And I know that as we go along, you guys are going to give me some hints that makes this even easier to do that I hadn't thought about. So together, we're going to make this even, making your own T-Track, we're going to make it even better before we're done. So stick around, leave your comments and your suggestions. I do read them all, and I suspect I'm not the only one that reads them. So uh, don't be shy. If you like this video or you learned something here, hit that like button. Let's me know that I am doing the right thing. Most importantly, though, please come back again because I'm nowhere near done. Oh, and next time, you might want to bring a cup of coffee in case I start rambling again. <laughs> we'll see you guys again very soon.